Now, I feel uh, very happy this morning because um, I saw a new meaning in, in the gospel that I had never seen before. And for years and years and years, um, more than I can remember, I always concentrated on this second Sunday of Easter, on that part of uh, where um, Thomas put his hands uh, to, pro to prove that it was Jesus. And I just saw it as another proof of the fact that Jesus was raised from, from the dead, another proof of the resurrection. But here's two things I never saw before, and I'll try and explain to them uh, in, in, in my own simple terms. Um, first of all, if you can imagine, and it's not difficult to imagine, this was the first time that after the, the resurrection that Jesus met all uh, the 11 apostles. This is the first time he saw them. And so, if it was me, and I met them for the first time, after what I had been through, what Jesus had been through, I would have let them know how I felt about them. And I would have been pretty annoyed. And I would have said to them, where were you when I needed you, you bunch of idiots? Where were you? You really are. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You, you let me down badly when I needed you. And I thought you were my friends. But what did, what did Jesus do? He came in, and the very first words, shalom, peace. Shalom, peace. No bitterness, no resentment, no bearing a grudge. Shalom, peace. Now, apply that to ourselves. How, when somebody hurts us, or says something to us, or causes us some hurt, we make sure most of us, maybe you're different, but we make sure that we let them know. And maybe we not just let them know once, but we let them know many times. And we go around, we go around maybe in a sulk, or let, letting them know, I'm not happy with you. How different from Jesus we can be. And what does Jesus dis display? He displays total unmerited forgiveness. Total. With no, with, with no resentment, no bitterness. Total, total unmerited. Because they didn't merit forgiveness, really. Totally unmerited forgiveness. He was and he is a notion of mercy. And when are we really going to believe that? The merciful, how merciful God is. And that's why today we celebrate this second Sunday of Easter, the lovely feast of divine mercy. Today is Mercy Sunday. And uh, in the afternoon at three o'clock, we'll have um, a special no no novena of mercy and be benediction. And you'd be very welcome if you, if you want to come. So there's Jesus. No resentment except total mercy. And number two, the second point that I missed, and, is, and this is of vital importance is we, again, always think that the fact that Jesus showed his wounds to Thomas was to prove to Thomas that the resurrection did take place 
and that it was Jesus who was raised from, from the dead. And here I am. And if you don't b b believe me, come and... It really, it wasn't a proof to Thomas that he had been raised from, from, from the dead. Because it's not that difficult to believe that God could raise his son from, from the dead, because God is all-powerful. But there was a vital message there. And, and the message was, and this is where it applies to all of us here. Jesus came back to show them, you can be wounded and resurrected at the same time. You can be wounded and resurrected at the same time. In other words, Jesus did not save us by his death or dying on the cross, but he saved us by his death and resurrection. And his wounds were an important part of that. Now, what is that saying to you? What is that saying to me this morning? It's saying something vitally important. And I want you to hear this. That we come to God not by being perfect, not by never failing, but with our wounds, with our flaws, with our faults. Because that is how we are. And for a long, long, long time, and people still, you know, I'm dealing with people in confession, and they still believe, firmly believe, that you have to be flawless and perfect to get to, get to God, to get to heaven. You got totally, totally, totally wrong. In, that, in the gospel this morning, that is what Jesus is, is telling us. Here I am, wounded and yet resurrected. Uh, I presume most of you have heard of a wonderful woman. Um, she lived back in the 13th and 14th century, uh, a woman called Julian of Norwich. And Julian was born in the year uh, 1343, and she died in the year 1416. And a beautiful phrase, and she wrote, she was the first woman to write a book in English, very first. And uh, she wrote a book called Revelations of Divine Love. And in that book, uh, she was a mystic. She has this beautiful phrase, first the fall, then the recovery from the fall, and all is the mercy of God. How, how beautiful and how concise. So, my sins and my faults and my failings are a vital part, a vital part of my life and what eventually will lead me to God. How extraordinary. And that is the mercy of God. We come to God more through failure than success. When are we going to accept that? And so, I thank God, and I mean it, for my failings, that I'm not perfect, that I'm far from being perfect. But, I, but that's okay. First, as Julian said, first, there is the fall. You're down there. Then the recovery from the fall, you come back and ask for, for forgiveness. And all is the mercy of, of God. How beautiful is, 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 is that? To me, that is so comforting and so consoling. 
that I've come to, uh, to the stage where I make friends with my faults. I make friends with my failings because they are the things that will lead me to God.